Hi, my name's Dave Milton and today we look at the most common rotor drives fitted to the manipulators. Today we'll be looking at the rotor drives we fit to our manipulation. We'll be looking at the sample holders that fit onto the end and the operation between these two drives. We'll also be looking at the part codes as well. The drives on the table are the most common drives that we use in manipulation. Uh, this does everything from the mini axe right the way through to the omni axe. Uh, these come as standard with a 256mm shaft which is from the flange to the tip of the rotation shaft. But these can be altered if they're fitted to a manipulator. So the manipulator these goes on to, the shaft will be made to the length that you require. So we we'll explain about the rotary drives first. These are the two main versions, as I said, which fit to all the manipulation we sell. This is the RD1, which gives you primary rotation only. This is the RD2, that gives you primary and secondary movement. The secondary movement is done by a shaft, which is operated by the thimble on the end. The thimble will travel a full 12 millimetres in direction but we only use 10 millimeters so we can drive the azimuthal plus or minus 90 degrees. So we'll have a look at the sample holders now. We have the SH1 which is primary only and fits to this shaft and we have the SH2 which is primary and secondary and fits to this shaft which is the RD2. Uh, the RD2 as I mentioned has the shaft which protrudes and this is where you fit the rack and the rack fits into this location here and the end of the shaft is clamped in this block here. Once this is clamped and this shaft moves, this will give you the rack and pinion movement of the rotation table. On this version, the table is fixed, but if you have a look on the back, you can see there's a set of three screws. These three screws can be released uh, which will make the table free to turn, so the table can be put in any position you like. You also notice in there you will see the sapphire balls. Uh, the sapphire balls in this case give you the electrical isolation between the back plate and the actual turning sample plate. On this one it's done exactly the same, but where you've got the drive wire, the drive wire runs on a ceramic bush so there is no electrical contact between this and the back plate of the sample holder. Just to explain a little bit more about the part codes, on this one this is actually what we call an SH1E50. This is the SH2E50 and what the E50 stands for is the offset because it's very important to have your centre line of your rotation so that when it rotates you're on centre of your sample. In this case this would have a very thick sample on it uh, to move it back this far. Normally it would be probably a third of this so this would be moved, uh, this part would be moved up which is released by the screw on the back here and this whole assembly will move up and down the shaft. On this version it operates the same except for you also have to release the drive pulley uh, where there's a grub screw in this part and this part to allow this to slide through and that's how you adjust the sample plate to be on your centre line of rotation. So these are made of low magnetic material stainless steel and the bearings are beryllium copper and the beryllium wire on there as well. So these are very low magnetic. Should you want a zero magnetic, we do do one uh, which is available on request. One of the questions we get asked is what is the little packet that comes in the kit? Uh, this is the KRD stop. The KRD stop are just two stops and a peg. Now this can be used on the manual or the motorised. If it's motorised, you can put into the screw fixings here, you can put the micro switch and then the micro switch will act against the stop so it will activate um, your motors to stop the motors running. And this one here, we've got them quite close together. Uh, the stops fit into this groove and there's a grub screw underneath which 
which fixes them into place. And as you can see, there's very little movement on this. But if you move the stop further around or closer, you can increase or decrease the amount of travel. If you need almost the full travel, you can remove one of the stops and just use the other stop, and then the only travel that you're missing is the width of the stop. So this is a quick overview on the rotary drives we use on the manipulation. There are other rotary drives available which you can see on the website. We've also showed the sample holders that fit to these and these are just the standard sample holders that are over is available. We also need to talk about the heaters that go on these which will be covered in another video. Uh, this will be the EBH heater for the electron beam heater and the PBN heater which is the resistive heater. I hope you found this video interesting and if you do, please subscribe to our site. Thanks for watching.